it seems like we have lots of problems to sort out that have come from a past or will appear in the future and we kind of need to somehow work out a way of fixing them and our mind will reference the past and then project it into the future and go okay this problem happened then it's now progressed and it's unfolded to now and it will unfold in this direction in the future and here's some options like mind like in robo robocop mode or <laughs> like here's some options that did 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 <laughs> like like coming out with all the different ideas of how we can fix this problem and what we're going to do and um here's why if we don't fix it in this way that we're going to suffer forever but there's something huge being overlooked all of that's total fabrication it's totally made up it has no substance to it at all when you're you're identifying with all of that and going into that storyline and kind of hypnotized by it all you can't compress all of that suffering the past and the future into this infinitesimal unfindable now <laughs> it's not happening now your mind will convince you it's you can string it all together and make it seem like there's this picture that is existing now and it's a certain way but in this absolute immediate like i mean razor sharp immediacy of now you can't string all that together you've just got a an influx of extremely rapidly appearing and disappearing fluctuations smoke-like apparitions of texture and sound and sensation unfindable ungraspable very peculiar bits of raw experience and it's just constantly coming in and out in and out in and out it none of it contains that past and future story that's all you're ever living through is this particular moment there is no separately existing moments but you are only ever experiencing this moment that's constantly changing it's constantly shifting the mind is actually terrified of not knowing and so it busies itself with incessant storytelling as a way to bypass the unavoidable inescapable space of not knowing not knowing is where the freedom is not in conceptual knowing in this experiential knowing like existential knowing that's where the freedom is because it's the freedom from the need to know the need to know is always coming from desire and fear grasping and aversion desire says this moment is not enough fear says this moment is scary and so the mind tells stories about it and it fills in the gaps creates something that seems very coherent the mind really wants to buy into a story about time because it feels like that's where the safety is but there is only this moment there's only what's happening now what's happening now is reality in essence how it's appearing is this particular shape this particular form this particular expression and that's not to say it can't morph into a different shape that it can't transform it absolutely can what is actually here because what's actually here is transcendental it transcends any story any idea and when you get clear about what's actually here then you see this for what it is and its infinite potential and it's like something is unlocked and you realize you're not restricted you're not confined you're not limited at all this expression of life this this moment is not limited at all so in that sense you're not stuck with what's here and what's presenting how this moment is shaped you appreciate the essence the nature of what's here from a place of curiosity playfulness wonder and celebration You're listening to the Non-Duality Podcast. This is Nick Hyam from thewholenessofexperience.com and here with me is Paul Dobson. The mind tries to compress all of the suffering that you could possibly experience into now. 
it feels like a whole, oh, this is typical. Of course, it's still like this. And this is because it happened back then. And now here it is and it's getting worse and it will project into the future and it gets even worse. And you're, you're, live, you're tra- attempting to live a whole time-based lifetime in timelessness, which is actually an impossibility. But the mind, being the magician that it is, is very convincing <laughs> and convinces you that this, this is possible. And it causes... It causes contraction, it causes pain, it causes suffering when it's bought into. But really, you're only living, the temptation is to say you're only living one breath at a time, but it's even, it's even less than that. It's, you know, it's to say one breath at a time is too much, but that's, I find that to be a good doorway and something I realized quite a long time ago when I was really suffering is like, well, I only actually have this breath. I only ever have to live through one breath at a time i don't have to live through one whole day at a time i don't even have to live through one hour at a time it's only one breath at a time and so you can make it through this breath and through this breath and that's your doorway into timelessness and realize it's actually even beyond just this breath it's even it's an unfindable nowness, but I, I find that living through just one breath at a time actually kind of brings you into that place. It brings you away from the part, the, the past and the future that your mind is imagining it's living now. And uh, it sort of redirects you away from that story to, wait a minute, is it actually like that? This is all about investigation, isn't it? It's, yeah. Is it actually like this? Am I actually suffering perpetually is there an unfolding storyline of suffering or is it just this am i only ever having to live through just this present experience right now this immediate i mean not even just this breath but just this immediate um experience and this this is why this is this is your doorway out of suffering (laughs) this is the doorway out of suffering and this is why in um AA and um, other addiction meetings, they they will they will say to live one day at a time. That's kind of in that's one step in the right direction. Just the cure is to live one day at a time. They will say, just live through this day, <laughs> and that's you kind of shrinking that lifetime down to okay. I just I just have to live through this one day, but um, this is going beyond that. Of course, it's you don't even have to live through this one day. How can you live through one day? at once you actually live you're living just as this moment always just as this immediacy always and you're never not just this immediacy and it's always there it is always this just anchor this ultimate reference point you go you get into go off into these story these really elaborate storylines of suffering and this immediacy is here just waiting just go wait what is the feeling of the, what is the texture, the, the sensation? And you're back. You just, that's like you're bringing yourself back into this immediate moment. This is just what's, what's he, actually here. This is why, you know, we always talk about bringing, whenever there's a, an act, a seeming situation that, of difficulty in one's life, we always talk about redirecting towards the sensation, the immediate sensation, like bring it back in, Bring it back into the so-called body. Bring bring it back. What does that actually feel like? What is what is so unbearable about it when it, you feel the sensation of this difficulty in the body, the immediacy of it? What is it made of? What is its texture? What what does it actually feel like if you just allow it to be there and just feel it fully right in this moment? Is there a story to that immediate sensation? And there isn't. And it's, it's just... It's mind stuff, the mind, the great storyteller, the great, which is great for imagination, great for creation, but also great for suffering as well. So, yeah, we only, this is an obvious thing, you know, it's been heard, said a lot in non duality, but we only ever have now. Like, it's, we only ever have now. And there's door, now has, now is all that exists. So now is always accessible. And it has infinite doorways back into itself out of the, the story in time and space the narration it it has doorways from that because that's not ultimately real it has doorways from that delusion back into what's real 
um, that can be found very easily just bringing your attention it's a case of just bringing your attention back to this what's immediate what is actually appearing yeah absolutely we only ever have now this present moment and what's important to say about this present moment is that it's not a point in time there aren't many moments because as soon as you start to conceive this moment as time-based then you actually going back into the story of time so often we think in terms of past present future and then we apply that story of time to the now to the present when we therefore think in terms of many moments the last moment the present moment the next moment when in truth there's only one moment it's continuous it's an ending but the mind because it thinks in terms of duality and separation it chops up this eternal now into many moments there's just this immediacy just this eternal present no matter what the mind says there's only now it's eternal a perpetual presence it's presence itself that's what presence is it's the now the immediacy this is timelessness so you are freed from the confines of time we put so much importance on time and it's based on this premise of scarcity of lack i'm running out of time i'm getting older i've only got a certain amount of time to find fulfillment completion and all the rest of it and so that's that's a huge pressure but if you realize that this is timelessness this is eternity knowing itself through this this temporary that's another time based word temporary medium of time that's that's really amazing like it seems like life has chosen to experience itself through time most likely because this is eternity and how can the one experience itself if it, this is just eternity there'd be no progression there'd be no movement there'd be no journey there would just be this <laughs> this and so it's made up this idea of time in order to split itself up split eternity up and then to sort of progress through some kind of movement and as a human being who has a certain lifespan who is born and who lives and one day will die that's one way that you which is reality in essence you are knowing yourself but that doesn't mean that any of it is real in the absolute sense it's only relatively real so you are freed from the imprisonment of time when you realize it's this is timelessness and it's not something you can find when you try to find it you actually create time or the illusion of time and you create the illusion of separation i'm not the now i'm not present i am being present or i am being in the now as a separate entity somehow getting on board with the moment when in fact you are present you are the moment the one moment but that's not to say that you can't experience yourself as aligning experientially with here with this immediacy it doesn't mean that you you shouldn't experience yourself as coming back to here and now there's there's loads of different ways like you've just said there's so many different ways to to do that to align it's not saying you shouldn't do anything to do that it's saying you don't need to because you are presence itself and if anything just notice that notice that you are this presence just notice in a very simple way because it is very simple just notice you are presence you are this now it's actually what you are 
you're not your story. You're not your life story. The story of the ego, of the me. That's actually not what you are. However, it's one way to experience yourself. So it's not wrong. It's not, it's not wrong as in it's not something you shouldn't experience. It's just saying it's, it's incomplete. It's only a, a little glimpse of your infinite entirety. It's one possibility of your unlimited potential. And it's relatively true. Like your life story is relatively true. What happened yesterday is relatively true. Yesterday as compared with today. It's relatively true. Yesterday needs today in order to be yesterday, in order to seemingly exist as, a, as, a, as an actual thing. But when we explore the present moment, the only moment there is, we don't find a yesterday. We don't actually find a yesterday, nor do we find a future. So we don't really find a present because a, a present depends on this, this, this idea of time. Because time is actually just this, another story we tell ourselves, that story can change. It's malleable. The story of time is not set in stone. Time is not actually linear. There are some systems like Hinduism that believe time is circular. And so look at that. We consider time to be linear. They consider time to be circular. These are just different stories we tell about time. So is there like a, an objective time? No. Time is totally subjective. And when you realise that there's no objective time and it is subjective, like, of course, it can, it can take on a new meaning. It can take on a new appearance. You can, it can experience time in, in new ways. Like, does that mean you can go back in time? In, can you go forward into time? Can time slow down? Can time speed up? Anything is possible because what is time but a story? And we always have the capacity to re-know what is, to reimagine what is, to recreate this dream. It's a dream. If you think about it in the terms in terms of a dream, what is time in, in a dream? Time isn't really a thing in a dream, is it? It's only a thing in a dream if if that's part of the dream narrative. If you're dreaming about something that has a sense of time imbued in it, then like that's part of the dream narrative. But how do you experience time in a dream? It's very, very different. It's very different than what we call the waking, the waking state. So time isn't really a thing in a dream. So what we're experiencing now in this waking state is a different configuration of the main dream. How much of the time do we actually experience time? The fact that we need to look at a clock to know what time it is suggests that we don't actually experience time directly. We have to refer to a measuring device. We have to apply a measurement to it for it to be something. We have time zones and, you know, when, when we have, we put the clocks forwards and put the clocks back. And so time is totally malleable. So there is only presence and that's actually what we find. We're just calling it presence, but we could call it anything. You, you called it this raw experience, this immediacy of now. But we certainly have the habit generally of identifying with what happened in the in the apparent past and then we bring that into the apparent present and then project it into the future and that's really heavy isn't it it's it's really it feels really sticky and you like you're stuck with this is all i am and i'm always going to be like it my life is always going to be like it as an individual as an entity as a separate person, you cannot actually embrace the now because you're limited as an entity, as an ego. You are in a, a state of resistance, a state of no. You're saying no to what is actually. 
you can't hold what is because actually you 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 are you are a self concept or a bunch of self concepts so you can't hold you can't embrace the present moment it's more like you the present moment embrace the apparent you the the ego the entity the individual the character which is a really powerful recognition you don't need to try to meet what is embrace what is what's what's arising now what's occurring now because you're already doing it you are that context you are that unlimited container of what's arising now so what is arising now well it's a certain shape a certain form arising from what you are it's an expression of you an incomplete expression of you but it can't be it can't be what you are in your entirety you are free to to express yourself you've got this you know you've given yourself permission unbridled permission to express yourself to shape yourself you're a shapeshifter you're always shapeshifting but never do you concretize any of your shapes any of your forms any of your expressions never do any of your experiences really stick nothing is static every arising is in a perpetual flow of becoming but you never actually become you never actually become anything there's just this changeful appearance stemming from the changeless self that you are so you are complete as the self but you can express and experience yourself as progressing growing transforming developing because if that's what seems to be happening then that's what seems to be happening but the truth is that you are complete already there's nothing to achieve or attain there's nothing to work for but again i say that with the caveat that that doesn't mean that you can't experience all of that or what you shouldn't but if anything just come back to this very simple and quiet knowing or recognition of your true self which is presence which is the now which is the embrace of your expressions yeah i mean it's never not here is it it's always here that's what i think makes it so so easy to overlook over and over and over and over is it's the now is synonymous with awareness or experience or anything it's it's any non-dual <laughs> way of describing reality is is synonymous with now it is now you are now you are the self you are awareness like you said you're a shape shapeshifter so you you can as that you can direct your attention towards the story towards the thoughts and the thoughts are very good at stringing a story together of course the thoughts are an expression of you ultimately but they are a a fantasy expression you could say a, a complete fantasy expression a pseudo reality that you can buy into and you can live if you choose to as as that reality to come back to this this presence this now that you are you're out of the quote unquote matrix you're not living in the matrix anymore you're taking the the red pill to buy into the story is to is to stay asleep and we do it over we make that choice it's like every moment it's like red pill or blue pill red pill or blue pill and i say moments there are no moments but every seeming moment every seeming <laughs> new shape-shifting change of this uh perpetually existing now there's a seeming there's a new configuration of of how things are presented and in that new configuration we seem to choose blue pill every time <laughs> go back to sleep go back to sleep go back to sleep i'll choose the thoughts i i put my attention towards the thoughts and there's nothing wrong with thoughts inherently but they the the buying into them is 
is where we go into time, we go into space, we go into, you know, what what is called samsara, and we've left the ultimately what's real, what's true, what's what's home, what's actual, in into an imaginary world. It's just a case of noticing, like you said, it's just notice. It's a case of noticing that's ha- that's happened. And not you don't have to tell yourself off you don't have to beat yourself up because it doesn't matter how many times you do that this this moment as you 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 as for now you as presence you as reality is always here just waiting for you to come back to yourself just embody me it says just just come back to me just be me you don't have to be that that thing that you think you are anymore you can. I give you the total freedom to do that. You have complete freedom as me <laughs> to do that. But you don't have to. You can come back. This is like a solid, just concrete reality that is waiting. Just It's just waiting for you to just touch back in with it. Just go, oh, right, yeah. I went off into the dream world again. But it, the thing about it is, is it's so obvious that... You can even think that you're going back. Oh, I'll go back to now, the mind says. I'll go back to now. I'll make my trip back to now. And that's that's already, it's made another diversion. Mm. <laughs> it's another, yeah. it's made it made a new road. You know, like, oh yeah, now is our journey. We're taking our journey to now. <laughs> and no, it's already here. You already, it's so primary. It's already here. It's already before that thought has even occurred. It's prior to that thought occurring. It it's it's what lets that thought occur in the first place. It's not like you have to journey back to it. Um, that said, say that thought does come up. Okay, let's go back to now. That can maybe be helpful <laughs> in some ways. Is it kind of redirects the attention away from the story at least a little bit, and you go, okay, so what what's actually here? And it's too. The thing is about this is it's too simple. So. Just being with the sensation of hereness, just feeling feeling that I'm sitting on a chair, feeling the texture of the chair, feeling my socks on my feet. Without those names, just the, the immediate sensation of it. I'm immediately here again, back into what's real. Those things that I've named aren't those, that isn't what's actual. You know, this, this isn't a thing called a chair. These aren't things called socks. <laughs> it's not they're not separate objects but the, the sen- direct sensation that i'm feeling here I'm, I'm at home with i again you know i'm here as reality i'm not off i can never actually leave reality but i can buy into the pseudo reality and i've 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 decided i don't want to buy into that for a moment <laughs> It's like falling asleep under a solid oak tree or something, and you can always touch, you know, wake up and touch the oak tree. Oh, the oak tree's still there. It's still there. It didn't move. It's like it's it's here. Uh, it's even more than that. It's it's actually what you are. Just feel directly into how are these words perceived? How is this moment perceived? Not and beyond even being perceived, how is it possible? What is recognizing this moment? What is recognizing anything? What? how is any of it allowed to happen not as an answer not as an intellectual answer but just feel that it's so primary to to anything you think you are when you're in your in your mind when you're thinking about your life and thinking about your past and thinking about the things that did happen and of course, you know, there's there's a place for that, as I've spoken to before, as in therapy and healing. There is definitely a place for that. But we're talking about what's right here, right, actually, what's real, what's real here now. And it's so freeing. And what's really bizarre is you realize when you start tapping into it more and more and start feeling your way into it more and more, is that you never, ever moved away from it even slightly which is um, a, a very strange situation because it really feels like we're moving around in time and space and going away and doing things and things happen to us and we're making our way in the world. But we've never moved away from this fact. 
even even slightly what we talk about here is what i want to find out what i am what not just in some idea of what i am but what what am i and there's there's no answer to that question but the nearest that we can say is is it's it's whatever lets allows experience to happen whatever allows the experience of then then a person appears within that experience thoughts and feelings and sensations appear within that experience but you do feel like you're that thing and it's like you contract around that and you feel this is me i'm here here i am an object in the world existing in time i can reference a past this happened yesterday and i can look to a future this is going to happen tomorrow probably there's something so basic that's being ignored and it's because it's so basic and so simple and so primary it just gets ignored and you it, the identity reaches out towards towards these <laughs> this story and becomes sort of enmeshed in that but I, you can feel it what is here what is what does it mean to be here what does it mean to is <laughs> what does it mean to hear these words to see the sights that you're seeing to feel the sensations i mean how is that even happening and notice how it's happening regardless of whether you're trying to make it happen in any way at all the trying is kind of you could say the person the kind of identity the the sort of the mind of trying but it's so it's it's happening regardless you can't turn as peter brown said you can't switch it off it's here and that's what's here is what's now <laughs> and it's it's just is and it, there's no um there's no good words for it it just is and everything expresses from that is it's just redirecting you turning your attention back round away from i'm this i'm that i'm the story i'm you know this is my problem i need to fix this i've got to do this and that to what is perpetually here what is what is even allowing this moment to arise i mean just looking at one thing just seeing how how are you seeing right now are you making seeing happen you know that's kind of a a doorway in for me that's it's like I'm not making seeing happen. Seeing is just happening. In the same way that the seeing is just happening, you are just happening. You are just here. You're not turning it on or off. You can close your eyes and say, oh, I'm stopping seeing, but you're still seeing. You're still seeing black blackness or patterns. It's just happening. You, And that's that's what this is. You know, that is what now is, is this. It, it's, it's just awake. It's just here. It's the ultimate simplicity. It is so simple that it cannot even be put into words as people always have been saying about non-duality. It's so simple. That simplicity is what you are. The most primary possible non-thing that could exist. The most simple non-thing that could exist. It allows everything. Every experience is an opportunity to remember truth to come back to what is actual to come back to what you are not to conceptualize what you are or what truth is but just the the raw immediacy as you've been saying the just this fact of being you just really feel this unprocessed aliveness and I'm calling it that, but there are no words to describe it. It's an indescribable actuality. That's what's real. That's what's true. There's so many ways to remember that. But one way is to know that every experience, every thought, every habit, every sense of self is an opportunity to remember that truth like in the past, we've spoken about how any experience is a kind of meditation bell that wakes you up. So you will kind of wander off into these experiences and then the fact the fact that you're having any experience, that is the meditation bell. It's like, 
oh, okay, what am I believing here? What am I actually buying into here? Oh, yeah. It's a concept. It's a belief. It's a thought. It's just a notion that attempts to capture this moment. And that's impossible. And that impossibility, that indefinability, that unresolvability is the freedom. The existing freedom. The freedom built into presence. The freedom that you are. The freedom is not found in definition, in telling stories. The freedom is found in silence. And by silence, I don't mean not saying anything, trying to find quietude. But the silence inherent in not knowing, the recognition of the hollowness of concepts, the, the insubstantial nature of language that when I say tree I'm not referring to an actual tree I'm referring to actuality appearing as tree it's an appearance so the actual tree is hollow is empty devoid of the concept tree you'll never find an actual tree but you will find the immediacy of presence shaping itself temporarily as a tree. You just find a happening, an occurrence. We can give it many words. We, can, we just find awareness, just find consciousness. And that goes for anything, any apparent object, any person, any experience. You just find this rawness, no reference points, and that is the freedom. The freedom is in the unfindability of stories, of concepts, whatever you want to call it. You don't find it. So, it, And that applies to you or who you think you are. When you buy into this idea, I'm depressed, you're defining yourself as depressed, as a depressed person. You're not saying I'm experiencing what I'm calling depression you're saying it's what I am I'm limited that way that's all I am my life is about depression and that's what I see that's what I see out there in this apparently external world depression a depressed world it kind of mirrors back that notion you have about yourself what's really happening is not a lifetime of depression or a week of depression or a person who is depressed right now if you ask yourself the question, what's true right now, without referring to the past, without going into the future, what's true right now? You can't say that you are a depressed person, because to say that you are a depressed person, you have to overgeneralize and overlook what's happening now. So if you experience depression, that does not mean that you are a depressed person. And it doesn't even mean that it is depression. Like, it's not a tree. So if you get really, really close to that experience, really feel it energetically, you know, sensation level, non-interpretive experiencing of that phenomenon, what it is, is not depression. So because you are not experiencing actual depression, you are not a depressed person. And we always talk about experience in these terms you know peel back the label just be interested in what is actually there you don't find a lifetime of depression you don't find a, an actual person who is depressed you just find energy in that experience you just find energy in the rawness you just find aliveness you find what you're seeking when you buy into this notion of being depressed. I'm depressed. I need to go into the future and find a resolution to find the opposite in duality, the other side of the coin. And so we believe that if we go into the future and we go into a seeking journey, one day we'll become the opposite of that depression. And why do we seek 
joy and vitality and lightness and all of that, that which seems like it's the opposite of depression. We intuit that it's closer to truth. We intuit that it's closer to who we are, to what we are. Depression is not what we are. We, we intuit that and it goes for any experience, it goes to any limiting belief we have about ourselves or, or the world in general. What we are is closer to those deeper qualities that we hear about all the time in spiritual teaching, like peace and contentment, equanimity and freedom, ease and flow, and all of those, all of that good stuff. We, on one level, we just intuit that's more like what I am, but on top of the intuition, we kind of seek it in the future. I need to become it, which is a a, a strange sort of paradox. And we also believe that if we if we get rid of something like depression, then we'll experience the flip side of the coin. Then my life will be one of joy and lightness rather than depression and uh, grief and sadness. But if you come here now, get close to now, as close as you can, lean into it, really hold it, notice that you are already holding it and that you can hold it not you as an individual, but you what you are, you can hold this. You, you are holding it, you're embracing it already because you're experiencing it and you are that experiencing capacity. You can hold this and, and what is it? What's true now? Without going into a story about the past, or without going into a self-concept, my depression, without going into a seeking journey, the resolution, the solution, the fix, the finish line, what's true now? What's true here and now? What is true beyond that story? What's true now is, is an invitation to get close, get really, to, to really delve into it, to really delve into your experience on a sensation level and beyond this notion of sensation to the energetic. And you find in the energy the very raw immediacy of your experience, that which you are seeking, that which you long to become, that which you already are. So amazingly, miraculously, you don't need to get rid of anything. You only need to discern the true nature of things. And when you do that, you recognize that the remedy is in the poison. The gift is always in the difficulty. That's the blessing, that's the grace. You always have what you need. In other words, you are always what you are, already. So it's an invitation to discover that, not to become it. I love that. Um, I love what you said. The um, the remedy is in the poison. That's, that's a really good statement. Some, um, what seems like a poison <laughs> is its own remedy you know it just requires further investigation more sensitivity a closer look take another look are you sure this isn't the antidote sure this isn't the remedy this isn't just a philosophy like um you know i can't say what reality is i can't i don't know i i, I know that if I investigate it enough, I can't find separation in anything and that everything becomes infinitely wondrous and miraculous and ineffable and open-ended and inconceivable. That is the remedy to the poison. The poison is the idea that it's just this thing that I've solidified into existence. I'm just... Um, you know, I'm just sad or I'm just angry or whatever it is, you know. I do think it takes a, a little bit of courage to look. There's something, it's like that moment I heard Gangaji said, you've got to, um, in order to see there's no monster under the bed, you've got to look under the bed, <laughs> you know. And you're like a child 
that's like looking for the monster under the bed. It's it's scary as long as you don't look. But when you look, you realise there's no monster there. And the harder you look, it gets even weirder than that. There's nothing there at all. It's just infinite open-endedness. Kind of infinite energy, you could say. I, I mean, we lack words, don't we, for what that is. If I, the close, like, so say I've, I've got, say I start thinking about a problem in my life and it might appear in my body as a, usually it's kind of like lower back, lower right part of the back. For some reason that seems to contract. I go, okay, let's just look at that. If I look kind of casually, but don't look that hard, it's like, okay, I, I see there's like, my lower back is, is kind of having this tense feeling and you go okay what do i mean by that let's look closer what's a lower back <laughs> you know like let's look it's really that's like on the cutting edge of the energy as it arises like just like let's just catch it as it arises really try and feel it as directly as possible not and very importantly not to get rid of it but like a child who is curious about something new it's discovered like a cosmic being that has the curiosity of a child. Like, let's have a look at what it's like to have this sensation in something called a bo apparent body. Um, and then the closer I look, the more and more weird it gets. The more and more fuzzy it gets. The more and more infinite it gets. And it, it becomes... It, the more the closer I investigate it's like zooming in and zooming in and zooming in it's kind of like you know if you had if you were looking at earth from the moon or something with a, a tele telescope zoomed out you kind of like you see the whole earth and then you zoom in a bit more and you zoom in a bit more you zoom in a bit more and then you kind of zoomed in on a country and then you zoomed in on a town and then you zoomed in on a like a, a kind of just a a small area within the town and then you zoom in on someone's house and you keep zooming in you zoom in zoom in just say it's like the most powerful telescope that ever existed and you keep turns into a microscope and then you've got <laughs> then you've got beyond that you got like what atoms and then subatomic particles it's like what was it what is any of it and then you can't find anything you just find empty space you zoom in far enough you just find empty space that's the outward version of what we're doing here that's the like you're looking within at the sensation it's no different to a scientist with a microscope just zooming in further and further and further into the nature of what it's looking at it because it's made up of empty space and it's just dancing empty energy which i mean th th these words aren't accurate but there are no words for that is in the end it's like seemings it's dancing seemings of energetic infinitely unique once in an eternity occurring energetic dance flashes into existence i mean for lack of better words i don't know the words for it it's just kind of there and it's not and it's there and it's not and it's not and it's not findable as a thing it's like empty space make it same self seem like a something what is that is that depression <laughs> you know like this is this isn't also this is not to undervalue depression because i have been depressed and it's fucking horrible and i just want to say that like there is the truth to that there is a relative truth that that is horrible but with in the context of what we're talking about we're talking about what's real we're not talking about trying to fix depression right now or anything like that we're talking about what's what finding what's real but we're talking about what is absolutely real what is real here now and every time i investigate it it amazingly boils down to this it becomes an indescribable, open-ended, dancing energy field of seemingly ecstatic little bubbles and flickers of, yeah, the best I can do is energy. You know, it's, it's so, and that, that's a long way from me looking at this big black cloud of depression and saying that's just depression. And I am depressed i am depressed this is going into that black cloud you you look overhead and there's a black cloud and you go what a horrible day it's that the day is made of this black cloud like you can't see the sun anymore and it's just 
grey and it's horrible. And you, you start investigating into the black cloud. What is that black cloud? It's, it's sky. It's an expression of sky. It's nothing else. And it's, which is bizarre because you start looking at it and it's, you go, where is the sky start and this black cloud begin? Where's the sky, the black cloud begin and the sky end? You know, like it's, I can't find where it stops and starts and it's made of open freedom. And that's quite a good metaphor, I feel. The black cloud in the sky looks, oh, if you don't look hard enough, it like, that looks horrible and that's ruined my day and, you know, say goodbye to the dog walk and, you know, that kind of thing. But you look at it, if you've got, got your microscope out again, look closer, it's made of open, empty sky. And really all we're doing is not looking closely enough. Yeah. John Astin, a, a, another friend of the podcast, speaks about, being an experiential scientist. So seeing beyond those misleading concepts that we apply to experience and then finding that upon experiential and empirical scrutiny, the truth is revealed about what we're exploring. It's not negating experience, it's getting close to it, not understanding it intellectually, but experientially. And Claire Diamond says, Suffering is to be looked at with curiosity. What is constant? What is true in it? Because held up to the light, nothing can survive apart from what we already are. She says, what is true in it? What is true in suffering or any, any experience? What is true in it, not what is true without it? It's here, so explore it. It's here, so ask what is true in it. What's the essence of it? What's the nature of it? What is the substance of this? It's in the light. Perhaps it's made of light. Like you said, perhaps the dark cloud is made of sky. Perhaps the transient wave of experience is made of the unlimited eternal ocean. 100% water. Whatever water is. Reality. Whatever reality is. God, whatever God is, it can't be said. So we're asking what is true in it, but we're not seeking to conclude because conclusions are resolutions. Conclusions are solutions. Conclusions are definitions. And we're not looking to redefine anything. We're not looking to solve anything. We're not looking to negate anything. We're actually seeing that it's all included. It's all it's all included already. All of experience is included already. That's completeness. And it's the freedom from trying to exclude certain parts of our experience and seek to include others in the future. Experience is self-embracing, self-including, and only ever expressions of source, of the sky, of the light, of what you are. So this is always just a an invitation to return to this recognition, to inquire with curiosity and playfulness and lightness. <laughs>